Here are your children. They're very special. <laughs> the hillside is absolutely covered in buildings. It's covered in pigeons. Don't drop them. <laughs> what we have here today in this amazing aviary is the middle part of what's called brood management. So what I do is I come up under license and I collect it was going to be eggs, but usually these days it's chicks rather than eggs. I collect young chicks from a designated nest. I then take them all the way down to Gloucestershire and I rear them. They then get put into an aviary outside and they get given chopped food. And as soon as they can actually hold a piece of food down and pull it for themselves, this is what happens. I bring them back up to a site where they're then put into this aviary they will stay in here <clears throat> probably three weeks. Some rats and mice and things, yeah. and give them Should that. Should we take them up to the far end and drop them out here? Would you like to come out by yourselves? <laughs> you would. It's only because you want to kill me, isn't it? <laughs> the nerve. Come on. That's a baby hen area. Right. Now we want them to go that way. Here we go. Can you go that way? <laughs> I know, I know, you hate me. Hello. So over the next couple of weeks, we are checking these birds daily and providing them with food and water, and looking after them, making sure they're safe in a really safe environment that helps them uh, fledge better than they would in the wild. So once the birds are in this pen, um, they have as little human contact as possible. So we walk towards the pen from the secluded end where they can't see us. They are fed through a pipe, so they can't see us through that way. Water is delivered into the pen again through a pipe. The whole idea is they can't see the humans giving them food so they don't become imprinted on us. They stay a wild bird to go and su survive in the wild. And this is perfect for them. This is just what they need. They'll stay, I suspect they'll stay under there for a while. The gamekeepers on the estate do a huge amount towards conservation and, and the wildlife in the area. Their part, in the, obviously, in conservation is providing a habitat that is great for obviously the red grouse, but it also uh, the wading birds, which provides food for other things. And also by having this great environment, we get the voles that the hen harriers love to feed on and the habitat that they love to nest in. And they are really looking forward to seeing how this project goes and the release of these birds and, and hopefully their ongoing success in the wild. I think it's really important that you do because yeah, if, yeah. if this becomes the norm rather than the trial which yeah, is yeah. what we've been doing and of course we hope it will because the results have been absolutely amazing yeah, yeah, um, then it's really important that the keepers get involved yeah. a week before they're due to be released they will be vetted blood samples will be taken to make sure they're 100 percent healthy and then they will be satellite tagged so that we know where they are and what they're doing and i have to say personally that i was dubious that this would do what we wanted it to do which was get people to have a, a better attitude towards hen harriers i need not have worried they have been amazing the people involved in the project have been amazing the attitude has been absolutely wonderful they've all wanted it to work and they've all been helpful and the hen harriers have been positively brilliant last year which was 2021 three of the birds that I brood managed the year before 
actually bred and had their own chicks, which is so satisfying. We're seeing amazing changes. We're seeing that those people involved are actually getting on with the program. Diversionary feeding is also helping a lot. The birds are surviving and I feel pretty damn good about it. I'm Hannah. <laughs> I'm one of the vets that helps with the project here. Um, there's three of us that come down from a local practice in York, uh, Battle Flats Vets. Um, we come out basically to health screen the birds prior to release, um, take bloods to check for, just doing a routine health screen, so we're just checking for anything that might mean there's something wrong that they can't be released, organ problems, um, red and white blood cell levels, check we've not got any anemia or anything like that, um, check kidney function, liver function, just make sure they're healthy basically. The really rewarding part of all this is when they come back to breed next year, hopefully into these hills. So that's what we're hoping to get data wise from these birds is really prove that they're okay, prove that they're making themselves back into the wild population and then ultimately breeding. And then once they breed, that's it really. Although we can trap them for three to five years, critically for us, it's the next two years when these birds become sexually mature, find mates and breed, and then we can show that the process of brood management, the captive rearing of these birds is not having any malimprintation or not affecting the birds at all to make them change their behaviour. He's actually a big male and he can have at least 110 mil head loop on. So then if we look through here you'll see a few that are just approaching the 110. Gamekeepers certainly are um, They've helped us no end and this year there's been quite a few keepers and it's growing each year that are helping us year on year. And that's really evidence that the keepers in the estates are starting to come on side. And again this year, keepers have phoned us up with seven locations and nests because the gamekeepers are on the ground all the time. Obviously we can only visit on certain days. So, you know, if we can engage with these people and then they give us early warnings of birds showing up, then it's a, you know, it's a real recipe for success, really.